Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going over the solar storm that is still ongoing and potential impacts that have already taken place. We'll hit new discoveries by the James Webb Space Telescope, Venus Global Electric Circuit, and volcanic stealth eruptions. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, several eruptive events at plasma filaments, but none erupting towards the Earth. Of course, we already have space weather here, don't we? Yesterday morning, we discussed how the solar storm was starting and that we could possibly expect more, and yes, we got it. Solar storm is crested over level 2, somewhat higher than expected, and there were several items that could be related from the plane crash in India during the initiation of the storm, actually exactly during the initiation, to some of the low-latitude auroras seen overnight, but most dramatically was the outage of cloud services worldwide, along with several other systems and domains. As is often the case, it will be impossible to pinpoint causation for most, but once again, major uptick in technological glitches during a solar storm. A couple other notes in space weather this morning. Sunspot number is on the rise, and it's more than just the growth of the departing spots bottom right. Quite a number and growing complexity incoming top left as well. We'll be watching for flares. Also, it is worth the long-term look to see that last week's impact was the fastest solar wind we've had in a year, and the electron flux has been steadily rising over that past year as well, on the left and right, respectively. Let's head next into space, deep space, where James Webb has scoped some areas that seem to contain nothing, but actually finds tiny specks of light indicating super ancient galactic star formation. What's interesting to me is that the highest returns of the speck were oxygen and hydrogen, star water, as true then as it is now. Excellent doctoral thesis up next, finding that Venus is a global electric circuit, just like Earth does, and that space weather has dramatic impacts on the atmosphere through that circuit. Of course, this has allowed major publication and recognition, but when you try to say the same things about the Earth, they look at you like they just said the sky was purple. And the last but not least, good study here on why some volcanoes give absolutely no warning before erupting. They say that if the magma flow is slow enough, meaning it doesn't cause harmonic tremors or quakes, and if the rock is hot enough, meaning it's melting and molding rather than lifting and cracking, then criticality within the chambers can go completely silent until the moment of eruption. That's kind of a scary concept if you think about it. Folks, Pole Shift Conference is tomorrow, a whole day of everything on the modern Pole Shift and what's coming. Blacksmithing class next weekend, prepper super event two days to close out the month, and the rest of the year is really no different. Conferences and prepper days and special events rest of the year. Check the events, register, and book your stay at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.